Hello, my name is Trenton My name is Trenton Casillas Bakeberg. I'm from Shine River Sioux Tribe Indian Reservation. Itasip Cho, Mini Koju Bands, and I live in Inga Butte. And I've been out here uh, standing with Standing Rock since about mid August here to protect our water for future generations and, you know, looking after the children here and doing what I can, you know, be up on the front lines and support with prayer and love and keep a positive um, atmosphere as much as we can. But it's been hard with all the negativity that's been thrown at us from the military police force. And uh, I'm here to share my story of what, uh, the events that occurred on October 27, 2016. Um, I was in a uh, I was one of the ones in, in the in the sweat in the Anipi when, the camp was surrounded by a militarized police force, and it was um, one of the most significant events of my life. And I just have to take a minute and process it because I'm still going through all the feelings that come with it. And I just got out of jail last night. I was charged with a felony charge along with everyone because of the fires that were started that day. And I really don't know what to say. <laughs> where where were you at when when the fire started? I was sitting in a prayer circle inside of the sacred ground camp. And we had our arms locked because the police officers were beginning to surround the camp. And I could see the smoke coming up and I just thought to myself, oh man, this is not, does not look good for our side. And uh, when the, when the police were getting closer, um, a man came up behind me and he tapped me on the shoulder. And he said, we come to sweat? Because they had a, a sweat lodge made. And I said, sure. He said, come with me. So I, I stood up and they closed the prayer circle and locked arms. And so I walked over there and um, they were heating rocks in the fire. And I walked mm -hmm. up to the sweat lodge and it was uh, just a little unch sweat lodge. They uh, made it small. but. <laughs> We still fit in there, and there was me and another man, and I asked, who's pouring the water? And he said, you are. I said, wow, really? Like, I've never done this before. But it was, uh, it was time for me to step up and, you know, pour the water, because in, in, a, in a Nipi, when you take that mini wichoni, that water, and you pour it in, on the hot rocks, and it turns into steam, that's medicine. You know, that's the, that's the energy of life that we breathe. And even if it's not steam, there's still water in the air that we breathe every day. And that's just how... Uh, how centered water is around life, you know, water is everything. And so I felt such a great honor to be able to be in that position and pour the water. Mm -hmm. And um, in the first round, I was play praying for, you know, the, the grounds around me, you know, that have been desecrated already and praying for my people. I could hear them outside. They were standing up against the, the line of police that was beginning to surround the camp. And um, I began praying for the police officers you know, that they may open their hearts and their minds to what they're really doing. Oh. Because they don't know. They're just being told by their superiors, you know, go clear out this area so the construction can continue. But deep down, you know, they're human just like us. They've just been fooled from a young age, you know, mm -hmm. to believe in a system that is driven by money. And the money is the power behind this corporate machine that's pushing through our lands right now. And so I prayed for them, for them to realize what they're really doing. I prayed for our people who were being discriminated against and being violated, you know, their rights were violated, my rights were violated that day. And, um, you know, through the, through the doors, I kept on pouring the water and singing prayer songs. I even sang a, a Sundance song because it's, I don't know too many songs, but it's just what I was feeling at the moment. I felt like we needed that power. And mm -hmm. around the third door, I heard the buffalo come running by. I didn't see it, but... Uh, somebody sang a, a buffalo song and they called upon the Buffalo Nation and they actually came and I thought that was a really powerful thing and so um, it was it was very powerful so uh, I wanted to ask you about you know how you said that uh, they they had strapped you so so tight so talk about from when they opened the the flap and then mm -hmm. they, they tore apart the sweat so uh, in the minutes leading up to that that moment when they completely surrounded the, the Anipi grounds, um, I was singing and I heard explosions outside of the sweat lodge. And um, I asked them, what was that noise? And they said, they're using flashbangs on us. And I was, I was singing and I just heard a <laughs> And then another one <laughs> So I got kind of nervous, but at the same time I was calm because I was so deeply in my prayer. 
And shortly after that, I heard the officers come up around us and they were saying, we've given you enough time. I'm sorry, but we need to uh, clear out this area. And just right after that, I. It was dark in the sweat lodge and they, they tore off the blankets and I could see light coming in and then all, all of a sudden an arm grabbed mine and they pulled me out. It was, um, it was strange because I saw a mass of people there but I didn't see like people as uh, individuals, I saw them as a whole, a collective and it was almost like we were all there together and we weren't separate in my eyes because you know we were all there for the same reason to hold that ground. and. I felt proud, I wasn't afraid. When they threw me to the ground, I wasn't afraid. They said, stop resisting. And I wasn't resisting, I just wanted to make it clear that I was still in my prayer. I couldn't mm -hmm. keep singing because they, they were holding me down to the ground. And when they put the zip ties on my arms, they did it so tight, I had bruises. And I don't have bruises anymore, but whenever they... Uh, so right here is uh, a little bit left of that. Yeah, whenever they uh, snipped them off, after they, they booked me in, I uh, got cut right there, it's a little cut. Not much, but it's still something. I, I bled for a while. Explain this right here. Uh, this is this is my booking number, number one hundred and sixty. This is so that. When mine does that, there we go. And yeah, um, honestly, they didn't let me grab my clothes out after the sweat lodge. I I was sitting there in my boxers, you know, basically naked, shivering because it wasn't exactly warm that day either. But mm -hmm. uh. I was just asking every officer that went by, can you go get my clothes, please? I'm, I'm sitting here shivering and um, nobody wanted to go get my clothes. And so I believe my clothes are lost to this day, I don't know. I mean, I had nice boots, you know, a good jacket, but it's just material objects, so I let it go. What really matters is the prayer and the love that we bring to the people in the water. And um, So share, share with our, our, well, the viewers, just so the viewers know that uh, a sweat is really similar to going in for, in the church, or in the prayer in the church, or next to the altar in church, or in the confession if you're Catholic, or mm -hmm. you know th that's what sweat is is to our indigenous people. Yeah. But but we also want to talk about um, where did they put you? Did they put you in a jail cell? Uh, no, actually, they uh, when they booked us in, they had us um, basically do like a strip search, and then they you know had to uh, take all your possessions, and then they put us in like these cages that looked like giant dog kennels, and there was like at least 20 of them in this one next to me and then the one I was in there's like 12 of us I was like the 13th one and I was only in there for a little bit before they transferred me to another facility and he was getting back to the prior point you know Inikaga or the Inipi is is like um, they compare it to being in the womb of your mother and when you're in there praying it's between you and Tunkashila and um, I was praying and you know that's that's basically prayer. Everyone prays, you know, who's, who believes in a higher power. And so imagine if, you know, you were sitting in a synagogue praying and somebody came and ripped you out, or maybe a church, you know, same concept. Uh, I felt really not only physically violated, but, you know, spiritually violated because they broke my, or they didn't break my prayer, but they disturbed it. And, um, you know, it was kind of traumatizing. I, I didn't realize it right away, but it, really took a toll on me uh, when I was sitting in jail for a few days and I, I was asking why you know why did this happen I knew I was going to be arrested by you know for supposedly criminal trespassing on that land but I was okay with the fact you know this is what I wanted and you know I just kept praying I stayed in prayer the, basically the whole time I was detained and um, that's so, what it's really all about and what can you tell our users a little bit about what is that land that where the ceremony was at um, that was the sacred ground camp, and it's near the Cannonball Ranch, right? Yeah. Yeah, so basically the Dakota Access Pipeline came in, or the corporation, and said that they own that now, you know, through their eminent domain or whatever, and um, our tribes came back and said, you know, we, we're taking this back, you know, through our allodial title, or they tried to say eminent domain, but it's really allodial title, I think, and that's, uh, that's our right as indigenous people, and so that's why there's such a big conflict, because we felt that we were... Um, you know, justified in being in the area, and that was directly in, in the proposed path of the pipeline. And so that's why the cops came and pushed us out of there. But we, we held the ground as long as we could. And, um, you know, I was, I was detained for a few days for that, and I have a felony charge now, which I'm sure, you know, it's not, it's not going to stick, because everybody got the same felony charge that day. There was like 140 of us. And it, it's, uh, completely unheard of to be in sweat and ceremony and then get charged with a felony yeah it's it's 
beyond crazy. It's blasphemous, in my opinion. It yeah. makes no sense, but I know I, I stay, I stay hopeful, and I have faith that you know we'll all make it through this together. I want to say thank you for being that prayer warrior that we needed to be there, and and with that, brother, say that with many blessings to you and your family, and that sacrifice, and to go in there with sweat. Mm. Aho! Thank you for your story. Bilamea. Thank you. <clears throat>